this is going to be bad. Hey guys, flocking with the Necro Parlor here, and today we're having a very special time in my backyard uh, to bring you something new, something I haven't done before. Uh, I recently got this package right here. It's a couple of frozen heads, some raw heads that uh, were frozen and shipped to me. Unfortunately, they were shipped from Alaska, which is not exactly overnight. Uh, so when I got them, they were not frozen anymore. Started to stink. Um, bad things happened. I did refreeze them. Um, but apparently sometime since then they got out of the freezer and sat out. So they, they've been sitting out for a minute. I'm really scared to open this box. As you can see, the box itself is bulging with the gases built up inside of it. Uh, it stinks, it's attracting flies. Ugh, let's open this thing up. I'm gonna hold off telling you what the species is for just another minute, but can you guess what I had to specially order from Alaska? Hope this box doesn't explode. Oh my god. I guess nothing. Yeah, so this one's been rotting. Bulging eyeball. Can you guess what that is? Oh man. Here's the other one. That did not get as good of a vacuum seal, I guess. Oh, there's two. Alright, so these are way too rotted. I am not going to attempt to uh, prepare this for the beetle colony. So we're going to be trying a whole new method that I haven't really done very much. So show you a new way to do it. The method we'll be using today is called maceration. Now if you know what maceration is, you already have a pool of vomit forming in your stomach. For those of you that don't know, it basically means we're going to Take these, put them in a bucket, fill that bucket with water, and let it rot. You know, originally I grabbed this bucket, but um, that's definitely not going to fit both of these. So I went and got myself a five gallon. I've used this for a bunch of stuff. It's really dirty, nasty. Don't think you're ever going to use this bucket for anything else ever again. I'm going to open up this one first since it seems to be the le least explosive. Oh, get ready for the smell. Oh no. Nope. Nope. This bucket has a crack in it. Gotta find a new bucket. There we go. Nice leak proof bucket with no holes. Now as soon as I cut this open. I'm going to throw it in the bucket. The trick is going to be to get this all done and in the bucket 
before the smell's so bad that the neighbors threaten to call the cops on me again. This is going to be bad. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm not going to bother opening it. I'm just going to cut it off. Thank Darwin for the invention of gloves. I'm never going to use this knife for anything else ever again either. All right. Here comes the stinky gases. Can you guess the species yet? Oh, he's so bloated. Oh my god. Oh. Back pressure starting to blow the brains out the back of the head. Into the bucket. Oh, oh, oh my god. You gotta get these juices in there too. Oh, oh. You'll see this in a second, I promise. use a puppy pad or something more absorbent for this type sort of work, but they're all in my workshop. Alright, so I got the two things in the bucket. Oh, that one's covered in paper towel or something. Ugh. Oh, that's, that's extra special. Ugh. You know, the blood makes it all liquidy, but it's the brains that make it gooey. Oh, oh my god. Okay, we're done. Just that. And you can see I definitely spilled some blood on the ground, which is super nasty. So I'll have to clean that up later. Uh, but that's step one. Put it in a bucket. And for step two. Make sure that the water completely covers it. Oh no, it's floating. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, what the hell am I gonna do when it's floating? Well, there's nothing I can do about that right this second, so I'll just close it up before the flies get too much of it. And move on. Now the idea behind maceration is that instead of having beetles or other insects eat all the flesh for you, you're just going to let the bacteria do it for you. So the third step is going to be optimizing that bacterial growth. We're just going to stick it in this corner over here of the property and hope the dogs don't get in it. Um, mine is, my bucket does not have a very good seal on it. I don't think this lid was made for this bucket. So, uh, yeah. Happy rotting. Oh, my finger's wet. Oh my god. Well, my bucket's back there. Um, and I guess we'll 
check on it tomorrow. See how it's going. Maybe two days. The reason I wasn't overly concerned about uh, the fact that it was floating, ideally the whole thing is submerged in water so the bacteria can work on it all at once. Obviously this thing has already decomposed some already, so it's just got a bunch of gas within the tissue that's making it float. Uh, I just, I really didn't want to, I don't know, put a rock on it or make it sink or whatever. As it as it gets eaten and decomposes, that gas is going to be released. It'll sink eventually. It might decompose half that skull and the other half still floating. Maybe tomorrow I'll have to flip it over. So it's just going to be less efficient that way, but worth it because I don't want to touch it anymore. <laughs> Well, I was content to leave my bucket over there in the corner and let it rot, but my Instagram follower, Mothy Bones, gave me some more tips, reminded me that I should cut flesh off of that skull before I let it sit in that bucket. Don't drop this in there. This one's for you, Mothy. Flies have definitely found their way in the bucket. I should probably seal that a little better. Oh my gosh. Yep, I forgot to sharpen this knife. Can you hear those sounds? Yeah, I can't do this. I need to sharpen my knife. Alright, let's see if that made a difference. Oh, yeah. Always use a sharp knife, folks. Saves you time and it's safer. All right, well, this might be as good as it gets. <sighs> Taking off a lot of flesh, all the tongue, leaving that flap there because it has hyoid bones in it and I want to salvage them later. This is about as much as I'm gonna get with uh, how slippery this flesh is without cutting myself with the knife. So, the good news is they sink now. Cut all those air pockets out. I think I did cut myself with a knife. Huh, now let's check on them in a day or two, see how they're doing. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around with the unboxing of these two disgusting heads. Be sure to stick around for part two where we will be actually macerating them. And a special shout out goes out to my patrons, who are the first ones to know about these skulls and have been with me for the whole disgusting journey. We have Chris, Sog, Sarah, Courtney, Christian, Aubrey, Sheree, Nikki, Arlo, Raph, Brandolin, Madison, and Marcus. Be sure to join my Patreon if you want to see more behind the scenes, early content, free swag, and more. And if you haven't already, be sure to help boost my algorithm by liking this video. And if you've already hit that subscribe button, then you'll be notified when this part two is uploaded.